Coach Kedley, uh, I notice you're going to be on the sidelines. Uh, I guess what, what's the philosophy on that, and who are your eyes in the sky to kind of help you kind of see what's going on from up top? Yeah, you know, just from early in my career, uh, kind of in this system with how we operate the, the play call process, it's kind of always come from the play caller uh, who's on the field and uh, via hand signals and all that stuff. So uh, kind of done that, uh, just kind of what I've always known. And I, and I also like being down on the field with the guys, you know, being able to call them over, be able to talk to every position on the field. Um, you know, clearly I'm going to have some of my assistants down there with me, but um, being able to talk to people and, you know, get in the ear of the quarterback and some of that and just be able to breed confidence in those guys while we're down there. Uh, I just feel like it's not the same when you're talking to them through, a head, through the headset or through a phone uh, from the press box. So just something I've always kind of done, and I, and I feel more comfortable with that. Uh, as far as in the box goes, you know, I'm going to have uh, Josh Cochran up there. He's going to kind of be my, my main eyes in the sky. Uh, and, you know, we'll have uh, Lou Bunning, our offensive line GA up there, also looking into the box and some of that too. So uh, that's kind of where we'll be. Uh, Coach, with the offensive line this year and also with all three quarterbacks playing on Saturday, how has the chemistry been with the three of them with the line this year, in your personal opinion? Yeah, it's been great. Again, I think if you uh, talk to anybody on our team, uh, you know, they love all three of those quarterbacks. They're all leaders. They all do a really good job. Um, so I think kind of when any of those guys come in, you know, throughout the rotation, throughout fall camp, I think they were comfortable with all those guys back there. And I think the chemistry has been great with them all uh, up to this point. Coach, with uh, Cam Valdez out, um, what have you seen from Bryce and Donnell to kind of lift him up to that third spot? Yeah, he's done a really good job. I mean, you know, you talk about a true freshman coming in and uh, really having to carry the load, you know, uh, with Taj just kind of being nicked up, nothing serious there, but uh, very precautionary on him, of course. Uh, Bryson's got a lot of reps of the last week, and it's been really good to see by him. Uh, he's really improving. You know, he's a great runner, downhill runner, uh, big back type of guy. Um, you know, and he's improving in pass protection, which is probably the newest thing for him coming from uh, the system he played in there uh, out in East Texas. So uh, he's really come along well, and we're excited to see him this weekend. And at right tackle, I'm Monroe Mills and Ty. What do you kind of need to see to separate one from the other to get that uh, starting job? Yeah, you know, his, uh, the, the big deal between them two, uh, you know, uh, Ty had been out for, for about a week. Uh, you know, it was kind of, we're, we're flipping those guys back and forth. And then T Ty had a, a slight injury that kept him out for about a week. And so Monroe had kind of uh, taken that job over and, and has done a really good job. And then we got Ty back this last week, and here comes Ty again. So uh, really just looking for the most consistent and the guy that does his job the most uh, and plays the hardest at the end of the day. Um, you know, we've got practice tomorrow morning and Wednesday afternoon, and, and we'll probably try to make that uh, final decision by then. Uh, we'll go next to Mason and Jarrett and then Jeff. Uh, Eric Samuda, Murray State seems to be their big mm -hmm. kind of defensive weapon. What stands out to you about him? Yeah, he plays really hard. Uh, you know, I kind of like to call him like a blue collar type of player. Uh, he likes to get gritty and, and do, do the, make a lot of the dirty plays, if you will. Uh, not scared to put his face in there. You know, he's been their leading tackler two years in a row now. Uh, definitely the key, you know, uh, player on their defense. You know, plays that Mike linebacker position. Seems like he's kind of the guy that gets them lined up. Uh, seems like a very smart player. Uh, again, I'm sure he's the team captain of the defense. Um, and so, you know, watching the film, seeing his st uh, stats over the last two years, clearly uh, he does a really, really good job. Again, I think he's a kind of blue collar, hard, hard type of player that plays hard, plays the right way, the way I like to say it. Um, and yeah, yeah, I'm sure he'll show up a little bit on Saturday. A lot about how they've been watching that Cincinnati game from last mm -hmm. year. What have you noticed about their defense in that game that you're taking away from that? Yeah, you know, I think uh, Coach probably hit on it too. You know, uh, their head coach, Coach Hood, he's, he's got a defensive background. And when you watch them play, you know, they're very sound. Uh, you know, not a lot of penalties, uh, not a lot of MAs. Um, they kind of are who they are, but they line up and they play very, very hard. Uh, you know, they, they kind of have the MO kind of that we do that we're trying to get here at Texas Tech, that we're going to play harder than you every snap. Uh, those guys have that. Um, and so, again, you know, I think that's what we're going to see. I think we're going to see a defense that comes out and probably plays what they play. Uh, again, being a, uh, in the background of their head coach, uh, but they're going to line up. They're going to be uh, very sound defensively and play very, very hard. Jared. Hey, Coach. Uh, Henry Teeter. Uh, seems like the least heralded of the of the tight ends on the roster away from the facility, but is consistently run with the ones. What does he bring to the offense? Man, he brings a lot. You know, uh, can't speak highly enough of him. Just his leadership, his toughness. Um, you talk about a guy that's been banged up 
all camp long and never missed a day. Uh, just and nothing crazy, but you know, maybe a, a swollen ankle here, a banged knee here, uh, but nothing crazy. And he brings toughness. Uh, you know, he's, he's a really smart football player. Um, he does everything right. You know, we talked about being the brand here and he was probably the first guy that, you know, I noticed in my opinion that when I was here that, hey, this guy's the brand. You know, he's tough, he works hard, he's competitive. Um, you know, he's kind of got a little chip on his shoulder being a walk-on as well, you know, and so, uh, but man, he's, he's phenomenal for this football team, not just this offense. And again, I can't speak highly enough of him, and I'm really excited to see him this weekend as well. And then uh, Miles Price, mm -hmm. he seems poised for a monster year. Just how do you plan on utilizing him uh, this season? Well, I don't want to give away too, uh, to me my secrets, but no, Miles is phenomenal, as you all know. Uh, you know, kind of the leading receiver back on this unit from last season. Uh, excited to, to be able to find different ways to get him the ball. You know, at the end of the day, to me, that's what the game's about. It's not necessarily about the play you call, it's about the players you get the ball to. And he's one of those guys that you go on every week and you say, hey, how do I get this guy the ball? So excited about Miles as well to, and see what he can do this year. Coach, taking a win out of the answer for this, what do you want to see from the offense this week? Yeah, you know, I think, again, you look at, you know, don't beat yourself. You know, it's our plan to win, number one. Don't beat yourself. So you're looking at, you know, pre-snap penalties or celebration penalties, some of those things. Play a clean football game. Uh, that number one coming out, always going to be that every week. And number two, play with the Red Raider speed and violence we talked about playing with. You know, we want to play harder than everybody else, and we want to play tougher than everybody else. So I think if you can come in, you can do those two things. And then clearly, you know, protecting the football, not giving the, uh, the other team the ball. Uh, if you can do those three things, I think you're going to have a – a really nice night every time. There have been some heralded offensive coordinators that have come through here, whether they were the head coach calling plays or just been the official offensive coordinator. What does it mean to you with your history with this school being able to add yourself to that list on Saturday? Yeah, I'm just honored to be back at Texas Tech, you know, in general. You know, I love this place, uh, love the community, love West Texas, love Lubbock, love the school, love everything about it. Uh, again, this is a dream job for me, and just being able to go out there on Saturday night with a double T on my chest, it, it means the world to me, and just excited to be here. Uh, all the other stuff is whatever. I just want to win for this, again, for this school, for this community, for these fans. It's what I want to, it's what I want to do here. Hey, Coach. Uh, Coach McGuire mentioned a little bit about Coy Aiken as well and that mm -hmm. he's going to be a, a big presence even on, on special teams. But what do you kind of see him throughout the offense as well? I mean, obviously, a uh, great offensive weapon there in, in high school, especially mm -hmm. that senior season. What do you expect out of him this year? Yeah, you know, he's he's really come along. You know, he was another guy that, that had a little uh, tweak early on in fall camp, so he missed about the first 10 days of camp. But ever, but ever since then, he's really come along. Uh, I think you're going to see a guy out there that, that plays really, really hard. He plays the game the right way. Again, you know, he's kind of a uh, – you know, Stephenville High School, blue collar type of kid, uh, hates to disappoint the coaches, plays very, very hard every snap. He's a big physical kid. Um, again, I'm excited to see him. Uh, you know, I think you're going to see, in my opinion, I think you're going to see a lot of Koy Aiken this, uh, this fall. You know, I think special teams wise, he's going to help out Coach Perry a lot on that, on that front too. But offensively, uh, you know, over there at, at that Z position and being able to rotate him in different facets of our offense as well, uh, I think he's going to come up big for us at times this year. We'll go next to Pete, and then Mason will finish with Don. All right, Coach, uh, can you talk about Tyler Shuck and maybe what you've seen since he was named the starter and as he prepares to, to take over the opener here? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think I've seen nothing that I hadn't seen before. Uh, you know, I think Tyler, from day one when I met Tyler, uh, he was kind of the same person he is today. You know, he, he's a guy that uh, wants to be the leader, uh, likes to be the leader of the team. Uh, guys follow him. Um, you know, I think uh, it, it was probably, if you ask him, it was probably somewhat tough for him going through camp, you know, because he's a guy that believes in himself and believes in his abilities and, and you know, probably thought that, hey, maybe I should have been named the starter earlier or, or whatever the case may be. But he's been phenomenal, you know, and, and again, uh, at the end of the day, at this position, you and a guy that people want to rally behind. And, you know, again, at the end of the day, no matter what situation you're in the game, you want those the, the guys behind you to say, hey, we got this guy about to get the ball and go take us down to score. And they believe in that. And I think that's the biggest thing that he's done is get these guys, not just offensively, but defensively as well, to say, hey, we got Tyler Shuck back there. Let's go win this game. And can you talk about a local guy who, who crushed it at New Deal and Lubbock Cooper, Nehemiah Martinez? Yeah, fired up about Nee. Uh, that's what we call him around here, Nee. Uh, excited about him, man. He's a jack of all trades. You're going to see him in a bunch of different facets of the game as well. Uh, he's another kind of guy that you're, you're excited about finding ways to give him the ball just because, you know, he's played running back, he plays slot receiver. 
Uh, he's going to be all over the field on special teams, I believe, and uh, excited about him. You know, love the local guy, but another thing great about him, he's just a workhorse, man. He comes to work every day. He's one of the toughest guys out there, one of the most physical guys. Uh, uh, really excited about him to see him Saturday as well. Um, kind of bouncing off that with Tyler again, with how much emphasis you put on the quarterback in your offense, uh, what ultimately led you guys to choosing him as the guy that would fit your mold the best? And how much say did you have in that call to make him QB1? Yeah, I mean, I think, again, when you when you go back and you look at it, all three guys had a great spring and great fall camp. Uh, but ultimately, I think just his grasp of the offense was just a little bit better than the other two. Uh, you know, he, he's very, very smart, very cerebral, uh, has a great understanding of what the opponent's doing, uh, you know, understands fronts and coverages and blitzes probably just a, a little bit more than the others. Um, and, you know, again, it was not it was never going to be a deal where Coach McGuire and I were battling at who it's going to be. You know, I think if you were in this building, uh, no matter what position you were uh, from the head coach to the office of coordinator to the GA to the uh, student managers that work this every day, I think uh, it, it was pretty apparent that Tyler Shuck should be QB1 around here. Uh, and so that was, uh, again, it was never uh, really a discussion that Coach McGuire and I had. It was just kind of apparent that that's where we needed to go with it. And uh, that's where we went, and that's where we are. Go ahead, Donald. Zach, with what you have at the skill positions, mm -hmm. uh, could you see yourself possibly being uh, <laughs> pass heavy one week or pass heavy in certain games and run heavy one week in, or run heavy in certain games, or would you like to have a balance week in, week out, or could it be more dictated by what the defense is more vulnerable to? Yeah, I think first and foremost, you go in every week and you say, how do we attack them? You know, what's their weakness? You know, are, are, are they not as strong up front? So we can we run the ball or hey, maybe the, to me, their corners, that's the, the biggest weakness of the defense. So let's attack the corners. Uh, I don't necessarily believe in, hey, let's keep it 50-50 or hey, I want to be 65% pass, 35% run. Again, I think the game is going to dictate a lot of play calls. Uh, I said it again, you know, it's kind of more about the players than is the plays. You know, I'm, if we get out there and we can't throw the ball, we got to run the ball. And if we get out there and we're struggling to run the football, then we're going to probably put it in the air a little bit more. Uh, to me, I think that's how a game goes. And as a play caller, that's how I see the game. Uh, not necessarily, do I want to do this or do I want to do that? I think you got to do what the defense gives you or, and also attack the, the weakness of the defense week in and week out. Also, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, uh, there's a picture, I, th I guess, of Barron with Graham Harrell, since he was a West Texas kid growing up around here. Mm -hmm. Is there any pictures of you with any uh, Texas Tech football hero? Were you ever uh, on autograph day? Were you ever in the line versus at the table giving your signing your autograph? Man, I'm sure. I, I'm sure I could go find some. I may have to ask my mom to go back to the archives and look. I'm sure there is some. You know, moving here in 1999 again. I mean, I was around the whole greatness of, of what was here for the longest time, you know, and uh, I went to a lot of stuff. I remember going to the old Mike Leach football camps and, and all that stuff, so I'm sure there is. I uh, can't think of any off the top of my head, you know, uh, since I was a young kid. Uh, you know, I got one in my office of me and Pat, but other than that, that was, that was a little bit different. So uh, can't think of one right now from, from a younger age, but I'm sure I've got some somewhere. All right. Uh, maybe one more. I don't know if uh, you, you want to give this away or not either, but how much do you script going into the game uh, plays? Again, it just kind of varies on who you're playing. You know, are they more of a multiple defense? Or are they more of a simplistic defense? Uh, you know, I, I was told a long time ago, the more, the more complicated the defense, the more simple the game plan should be. And the more simple the defense, the more sophisticated the game plan can be. You know, I learned that from, uh, you know, Coach Kingsbury, one of my mentors. And I kind of took that at heart because, you know, if you know where the defense is going to be, well, then it kind of simplifies from the uh, vantage point of the quarterback what you can do. Uh, and if they're very multiple and they mix things up all the time, and they don't, maybe don't have so many tendencies in so many areas, you want to be able to give your players uh, you know, different opportunities to, you know, for a quarterback, for example, to go through a progression read instead of saying, hey, they're playing this coverage, this is probably where the ball is going to go. Uh, give them more of a progression read so they just have to uh, go through reads that way. All right, that'll conclude today's press conference. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you all.